Well, hello there again. A little review here of our last coffee chat talk. I didn't have a chance to do this anywhere else, so I'm doing this in my shop here. This topic that we had for coffee chat was called living in balance, or what is that? As you can see, there's a bit of a balance of echoes going on here. So that's hopefully you can hear this okay. We had an amazing turnout, whether that had to do with the topic or just a growing group, I'm not sure. We met once again at a different venue because we're challenged right now with trying to find what works. Middle of summer once again, when many clubs would shut down because people wouldn't have the interest perhaps. And here we had a total of 27 who were there for the event, but actually it was 28 because somebody had to leave early. And wow, did we ever have full on well, it's supposed to be an hour and a half event, 7 to 8.30. There were still people there close to 10 o'clock talking. And the discussion proceeded out into the parking lot where it went on until about 11 o'clock at night. So there must be some interest in, in what's going on here. So we actually had a little discussion afterwards as to possible solutions to being able to have everybody see this as a meaningful exercise even when there's a lot of people and not everybody will be able to talk at once. But we will find ways, I would say. The, the format we used once again because of the larger group was we went around the room and allowed people to have their input as best we could without interrupting, which took most of the time actually. And I'm just going to go through what people had to say about balance because this is so valuable to get what's working for other people so we can pick up on ideas. Because we hear a lot about this idea of balance, don't we? Living in balance, how can we live in balance? How can we juggle everything that's going on in our lives and make some meaning out of it and not run ourselves ragged? I won't mention names once again, I'll just list things that popped out as really memorable to me anyway. And if you, have, you want to add anything to this, just chime in afterwards when you see this. I would say that a couple of things really popped out as recurring. One of them was exercise and another one was happiness. But I'll go through approximately how it turned out. There was, there was exercise. There was the idea also kept several times of we are bound to be unbalanced while we are moving towards balance. Or at least out of balance for a while until we get things sorted out. There's the trial and error sometimes because we don't always know what we're doing. However, one guy said it's not maybe a good idea to be out of balance for too long. The question is how long, you know? There was the idea of seasonal differences. Depending on what time of the year it is and what's going on, there could be a disbalance or, or an unbalance rather or a balance. And that can change season to season. Not taking life too seriously helped one guy to stay more in balance. And he found that exercise was always the option. For example, he liked to climb stairs at work rather than take the elevator and go down the stairs as well, whereas many people don't. But that option exists for everybody. Being more mindful. Somebody who's a single parent with children has found that taking time self-time kind of thing, being, being aware of the necessity for self-time and not just giving everything to everybody else can help with the balance area. Getting out and talking to people, which is what we do at Coffee Chat, that helps. Somebody mentioned that being out of balance for a long time can lead to such, such things as cancer potentially. Making self a priority once again. Incorporating the whole being, the body, the mind, emotions, all of that together can help create and no extremes in any way can help with balance, one, one lady said. Get out of making the same old mistakes. I think somebody might have mentioned the, the definition of insanity said by somebody was that 
Einstein or one of those people, you know, saying, do, doing the same thing over and over again, the same mistake over and over again, could be seen as insanity. Living deliberately, choosing what it is, what steps we're going to take. Somebody mentioned an author, James May, I believe, who wrote a book about harmony and having life, the different areas of our lives, be like an orchestra where at times it's actually important for a certain instrument to take over and a certain one to die down a little bit. So we can, our life can be like that. Somebody also mentioned Scott Epps' Abundance Wheel and also Tony Robbins' Abundance Wheel of showing different areas of our life, like pie, like pieces of pie, financial, relationship, these sorts of different areas of our lives, and rating one to ten and you can see some spokes are long and some are short. And the idea is to make it more like a wheel, maybe. But then again, maybe not at certain times. Maybe sometimes there's a necessity for it to be lower. There was lots of talk about that. Somebody said that this is a good topic for workaholics. His <laughs> workaholics tend to be unbalanced for a lot of the time. One guy mentioned this little analogy of an airplane flying, where the vast majority of the time it's actually off course. It is constantly readjusting. So his approach to balance is do something every day that gets towards what we want. And that's kind of like the airplane analogy. It's constantly correcting to, and that's his way of balance, is constantly do something, step, make one step in the direction in which he wants to go. Few people mentioned they didn't know much about balance, so they're more into listening. Somebody mentioned about happiness. Is this really balance or is it, is it an illusion? And is balance really a long-term thing or is it more of a short-term thing? It was more of a question. Some people were asking questions rather than making comments about what works in their lives. Somebody mentioned, once again, about being self-aware. When we're self-aware, we can maybe feel and sense and see what is out of balance. Um, balance is a never-ending story, as is unbalance. It's a constantly in and out, I guess. Somebody else mentioned that depending on where you're from, what country you're from and so on, balance can be seen as different. Whereas one place it might be very laid back, and a place it might be working all the time, and, and the working all the time, that's kind of like a balance. Staying focused, somebody else said, that equals balance. Love. Somebody mentioned work and play, and hopefully he gets a little heavier on the play side of things, which that actually led into a really interesting discussion at a certain point about playing to the max and that becomes fun and that becomes actually a livelihood in a way that people would actually want to participate in. I, I, it wasn't mentioned there but think about Cirque du Soleil, you know, somebody's dream of doing acrobatics and so on and become this, became, became this wonderful worldwide sensation. Maybe something along that line. After that, we had a discussion. No, there was, I forgot what I had to say too, right? There was this book that I brought up. It's called Free Your Inner Genie. And in there, there's talk of something called a God of Equation. Hmm, interesting. A God of Equation. How could, what, what is a God of Equation? Well, as it says in here, you know, balance. If you really boil it down, balance seems to be one of the roots of, of everything. A little earlier on it talks about how there's this thing called the continuum of advancement. The continuum, of, the continuum is time. And the advancement is the nature within all of life to want to grow. You cut the grass, it wants to grow again. You observe humanity 
and we've moved from living in caves to living in modern dwellings. We continue to invent things. We no longer treat, for the most part, other cultures and, and women, as a good example, as lesser. You know, we're starting to see things as more truthful, I think. And the observation of that sort of explains why it is that we achieve things, in a way, except it doesn't really explain the underlying root. And the underlying root, as it talks about in here, is this thing called the God of Equation. Well, what is that, really? Well, if we think about it, we think about the, a basic understanding of mathematics in equation. It always has an equal sign. And that equal sign has to equal... It, it, it means that one side is equal to the other side. One plus one is equal to two. And I remember when I was back in, in high school and college, in chemistry, we used to what we used to balance equations. It was it was an ongoing exercise of balancing equations. If it was an unbalance, it had to be balanced. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. And if you think about it, if something is in balance, then it becomes stationary. A rock sitting on the ground is stationary. If it's out of balance, it has to move until it seeks balance. So, for example, if the rock is rolling down the hill, it's got to roll until it seeks balance. So, the same with us, in a way. We're always either in balance to an extent or out of balance to an extent. And if we're out of balance, we're moving towards balance. So, in that respect, we're always in some sort of state of balance or moving towards balance. The only question, then, is do we like the balance we're in. And if we don't, then we have to, like in the chemistry equation, we have to change one side of the equation in order to change the other side of the equation. We have to give some sort of an input to change the output to, the be to equal out to what we want. That's kind of how I saw it anyways. In this book, there's, there's almost a whole chapter on this, but it's, it's kind of interesting. The only reason why the word God was used for the this this word has been used so many times to explain this the unexplainable, this omni powerful, omni yeah, omni omni powerful creative force, if you will, which seems to be beyond each and every one of us's control. It just it's just like it's like this bedrock rule or rule or or creator or what have you, and of equation, because the equating seems to be when the will and the effort and so on is all behind it, it equals out to results. And just, it says it here, I'll just read a couple lines. Today, even science has proven that certain mathematical laws can stand the test of time. More effective, more equals more truthful, in other words. Practically everything that happens in our natural world can now be explained as something seeking balance, seeking equation, or imbalance. In the case of seeking balance, when the cup breaks, the water spills, if it has water in it. When the wind blows, the flag flaps. And when we act, stuff gets done. See, it's just... But the question is, is the stuff getting done what we want? That's the most important question. The balance is already there. The question is, do we like our balance? Now this discussion then, that took up about oh, well over an hour. And then we just descended into cross chat, people had made notes and then referenced, and it went on where this one lady talked about playing like crazy. <laughs> if, so that's an example of, do we like our results? 
because there was a discussion of work versus play. Well, what if work and play can be brought together so you play and play like crazy and it becomes a balance that we can actually like. Somebody else then talked about fear as holding us back from what we want. But once again, the fear injected into that equation equals out to a balance of results of what we don't want. So there's ways that we can overcome fear. And one, somebody mentioned perception as often a helper in dissolving certain fears because with one perception, thing can, th something can look fearful. From another perspective, the fear can look absolutely absurd because there's no basis for it. So, there was also a mention of a guy named Sean Acker, I believe his name is, and he talked about the happiness advantage of workers who are looked upon, work, workspaces that were happy, where most people were happy, their work was much more effective than, 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 than workspaces where people were not happy. I mean, this kind of makes sense in a way because if happiness is what we want and we're putting in, we're, we're putting a dose of happiness on this side of the equation, then to equal out, there has to be a dose of happiness show up. So the results are happy results. That's something that just kind of made sense when I was just thinking about it. There's another book too mentioned, Marcy Shimoff, I think, Happy for No Reason. There was another book mentioned, but I don't remember the author. It's called The Magic of Believing. There was a lot of talk about happiness. That seemed to be, it's interesting, isn't it, how the talk started about balance, but what it ended up as is what does balance look like? What, what, is it, what are the results that we want out of balance? This wasn't discussed, I'm just thinking of it off my heart. And that, and that relates a lot of times to what we talk about so much, the quality of life. The quality of life we could say is happiness. That's what we want. On we want to have that on this side of the equation, don't we? Perhaps that that's why a lot of it was discussed in relation to balance. Somebody else mentioned that happiness is not necessarily our goal all of the time, and that's actually a good point because life is life is a like a a buffet table, isn't it? And we hope to experience happiness for sure, but there are times when other emotions surely can be affected. We've all experienced that anger can sometimes push us through as an example, but it's not that we want to dwell on that all the time, but happiness shows up a lot. Somebody else talked about the power of meditation, and this is, once again, these are, these are tools that we can use in Balancing our lives in a way to achieve or to experience what we want in life. So the meditation can, call, can, can, can help us. It's like a tool, a practice that we can involve ourselves in. Once again, if we're stuck in the same, doing the same thing over here and wanting different results on this side of the balance scale. However, if we, if we inject, say, meditation or something that will help us to quiet us down, to relax and whatnot, then that has to show up in our life experience. How you feel, there was talks about feeling, about getting in touch with feelings and so on. And that can help us with awareness and whatnot. I know it wasn't much prepared at all, but that's pretty much in a nutshell what we went through. And like I said, we also had a discussion about what to do with Coffee Chat because it's getting to be such a large group. And also we're having a, more of a challenge to find venues that will accept us now because we're so large. We move in, we take up a whole area of a restaurant and 
it's past people's supper time and so on, so people, not everybody's eating. Therefore, they want to now charge us for showing up. So there will have probably have to be changes coming because the last thing I would want to see is, is turn people away that there's too many people at Coffee Chat. So as many people, if we can make it good, work, and I think we can, with allowing as many people to come as they want, there's got to be a way. So if you have any suggestions, if you've got any experience on facilitating at larger groups and how we can then incorporate some of that into Coffee Chat and make this an enjoyable activity for everybody. Thank you for listening once again and I will see you in a video in a couple weeks probably. Bye bye for now.